How do you thank someone who gives you back your life? Harder. Who's been a naughty little boy? I have. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? We are at the most controversial film next to Jason Goes to Hell in this franchise, Jason X. This is the 10th and final entry in the original storyline. I think this is supposed to technically be the same Jason from the original storyline. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. But this is the end of this timeline's Jason. This is the death of Jason, I'm sure, at the end. Spoiler, I'm pretty sure he's dead. All right. Now, you know, Freddy versus Jason, that's a whole different, like, alternate universe. I look at that as a whole different, like, dimension. Some other planet where Jason and Freddy live in the same Earth. I will not be reviewing Freddy versus Jason because I have already done that when I went through my Nightmare on Elm Street review series. It was, like, 26 minutes long. My thoughts have not changed. So if you want to see that, go, right, go ahead and look for it, Mr. Hat. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason. And I will leave a link to it uh, along with all my other nine reviews that I've done. All of them very much in depth and lots to see there. So check them out if you haven't already. Now let's talk about Jason X. And before I do so, I highly recommend picking up this book by King Hodder. If you're a Jason fanatic, you should already have it. It's got all kinds of juicy detail about being in on the set on all four of these movies that he's in. And life before, life after. Great book. Great read. Not a boring moment in it at all it's very it's a page turner is that what they call it it's just so interesting you can't stop turning the pages it's a very interesting read so check it out if you haven't there's even a documentary based off of this book called the killer and i or something like that or to hell and back yeah i think it's hell back check that out it's on amazon prime i think you can watch it for free so now let's really get into Jason X. Let's talk about this controversial film that's got like a 20% of Rotten Tomatoes. It was on Roger Ebert's most hated list. The last movie to be done by Kane Hodder and directed by Jim Isaac, one of three Friday the 13th directors to die. Uh, you got Jim Isaac, Stanley Steinman, and John Carl Beekler now. So rest in peace, Jim Isaac. I'm not familiar with anything else he did. Oh yeah, okay, so The Horror Show. I think Jim Isaac directed The Horror Show, which is House Part 3. This was produced by Sean Cunningham's son, Noel Cunningham, who was originally supposed to play Jason in the first movie, but didn't get to do so. His mom robbed him of that. So Jason X tells a story about Jason in the year 2010 in the opening. The government has control over him. They're studying him, trying to figure out how he can rebuild tissue. He's like the Wolverine now. Whatever you do to him can't kill him. His body heals up. But then they freeze him, and he comes back 450 years later on a spaceship. This college professor's class goes on an expedition down to Earth-1, which is completely destroyed. They bring him onto their spaceship, and he thaws out and comes back to life and starts killing them all. It's got a very... It's got some similar things going on, like an alien. It's basically alien, except it's Jason killing them all. You got this grunt team. They call themselves grunts. They're basically an army for this professor's class. I'm not sure why a professor and his college students would need a freaking army to protect them. I guess it's dangerous in the future, so you can't have enough protection. Now, this movie was rewritten a lot. It was originally written by Todd Farmer, who went on to write the My Bloody Valentine remake, and this was supposed to be very serious, and they completely rewrote it, a lot of it. Some elements are still there, but they added all this, like, scream humor, this meta humor sprinkled throughout, some just self-referential moments, and it's very silly. There's silliness sprinkled throughout but you can tell that there was rewrites when you're watching it because it does kind of have both scripts kind of melded together where there's moments where it's taking itself very serious it's got a serious tone especially in the opening and then after the college you know students show up it gets very silly you got nipple twistings and guys wearing like dresses and nipples falling off of robots the whole character of KM especially is the cheesiest what the fuck character in this franchise. She's like the Freddy from Halloween Resurrection. She's doing kung fu kicks and kicking Jason's ass. 
it gets very silly, so I can see why some people hate this movie. I'm okay with it. You got David Cronenberg and his crew on set. He got to be in the movie at the beginning and only if he got to die. That was the rule. If I'm going to be in your movie, I want to die by Jason. Now, Jason X, one of the first films to use an old digital process, it was made because they were trying to get Freddy vs. Jason made, but legal issues or just not the right script. If there was just so many scripts at the time, they couldn't get it done. So they're like, all right. The fans can't wait any longer. Let's just get something out there. And they came up with this. To be a fly on the wall in that meeting room where they're coming up with ideas like, well, we had a telekinetic girl fight Jason. We had him in New York for like 10 minutes at the end. And then we had him go to hell. Let's take him to space. That worked out for Leprechaun and Pinhead, right? And even King Hodder thought it was a joke when he read the script or before he got the script. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? But then he read it and he liked it, and that's why he's in it, obviously. And this was the fourth and last time that King Hodder ever got to be Jason, unfortunately. He said in his book that it was the easiest and most fun time he had as Jason, next to being in Times Square in Part 8, of course. But it was the easiest makeup he got to wear. He loved the look of Uber Jason. He got the biggest pay raise of the four movies he did. And the last kill he ever filmed was killing Crutch, the engineer of the ship there's even a sleeping bag homage kill towards the end that was his idea that like th hit her up against a tree very cool callback and they even were going to have pamela Voorhees played by betsy palmer they actually went to betsy and said you want to do it and she said no because after part two she swore she would never do another friday the 13th film and she stuck to that she kept her promise she never even came back for the remake or freddy versus jason which is a shame like I'm sure she has her reasons, but I wish she would have done a couple more. It just would have been nice to see her, especially in that, you know, simulation scene. They were going to actually have Jason kill her just to show how evil he is. After this movie was completed, it still took like two years for this film to be released wide in the theaters because I guess someone at New Line Cinema stepped down because of reasons. And this was the least cut film of all the Friday 13th movies. The MPAA took a vacation and there was a death scene that got cut from the film and that was Stoney getting cut in half by the doors. They were gonna have that kill in there but I guess they got rid of it for a simple gut stab. That's a shame. We should have had a 13 ghost kill. That would've been amazing. So now let's get into the movie. What are my personal likes and dislikes? Let's start with the likes. First and foremost, the biggest thing I enjoy about this silly ass movie is King Hodder's Jason. His performance in this one rivals part eight for most badass, especially in the opening five minutes alone. He is his most menacing out of all four movies because he is just wrecking house. He kills like five people in one scene. <laughs> Unheard of in the other movies. All of them combined. You don't see that at all. It's like he has this cropsy moment where he's taking out multiple victims in one scene. It's awesome. This movie feels the biggest. It has a lot of action scenes in it and it tries something a little bit different. It basically takes your typical Friday the 13th template, you know, Jason Voorhees killing people one by one and throws it in space, new setting, just like Jason Takes Manhattan. Same concept, different setting. I'll always give you know, credit where credit is due. They tried something a little bit different. Did it succeed? Meh. For most people, hell no. But there are some fans out there of this movie. I'm not going to say there isn't. Everybody likes a good, cheesy space movie. And this is an entertaining one. I also thought that the set designs of this futuristic spaceship were cool looking. I mean, they were slightly innovative. They looked beautiful. There's some cool lighting here and there. And I like the way the spaceship looked in some scenes. They also have, you know, the darker areas of the spaceship, you know, for the horror atmosphere. So there's some good atmosphere here and there. You got sh uh, Jason lurking in the shadows, taking grunts out one by one, which is a great scene. So the overall look of the ship and like inside all this futuristic set design, even the clothing on the characters looks futuristic, some odd fashion definitely so they actually try to make it look like the future like they should have in part seven and eight because technically those movies were the future when they were being made timeline wise 
But yeah, I I'm not blown away by the set design, but it looks good. I mean, especially that simulation thing where he's like in Crystal Lake again looks pretty good. I mean, that whole scene is a positive for sure. That the hollow deck, that simulation where everything turns into Camp Crystal Lake, that's one of the best scenes in this movie for sure, if not the best and one of the most iconic of the franchise at this point. It's a great, clever callback to the first few movies where they're at Camp Crystal Lake killing, you know, I'm not sure why I said there, it's only one person, Jason, but you know what I mean. It's a clever, fun way to show the fans what they're missing from this film. Hey, you want a beer? Or do you want to smoke some pot? Or we can have premarital sex. <laughs> we love premarital sex. And if you're going to take Jason into space, I like this explanation. It makes sense. It doesn't feel forced or just lazily written or like it just starts in space. They could have just had this movie start in space and Jason's just up there like Leprechaun 4 where the Leprechaun, he's just in space. No explanation. That's where he's always been. Now, the explanation about how he got up there being frozen and then 400 years later, they come down, they pick him up. They want to thaw him out and see if they can bring him back and study him. Makes sense. And last but not least, Uber Jason. What a badass look. It is begging to be like an action figure. I'm sure it is at this point. It's probably like some NECA, whatever they call them. It's just a badass look. It's a shame that they waited so long to get that into the movie. Like, it's an hour and like 10 minutes when that happens, when he becomes Uber Jason. That should have happened at like the 40 minute mark, at least. Somewhere around there, in the middle of the movie. Not like the last 15 minutes. That's just a little bit of a bummer. I wish we could have gotten more Uber Jason, but the way he looks is way better than the way he looked before Uber Jason. So that would bring me to my negatives, and that is the look of Jason in this movie and the mask. The mask is upgraded where he has like a nose now. It like protrudes out just a little bit. It's got like a little sharp nose. It's just a little different. Like, where did he get this mask? I mean, I don't know, because there's no continuity anymore because of Jason Goes to Hell and because of the ending of Part 8. Let's be honest, how the fuck do you continue from there? How do you keep the continuity going? So I have to blame 8, but also 9. So continuity out the window. Where's Jason been? How did he get kidnapped or you know taken by the government? I want to know these things. But yeah, the look, I'm not crazy about it. I like that he has a chain around his neck, so that's kind of a little... Uh, Easter egg, a little clue that this might take place after part seven, where he gets out of the lake and he's got that chain around his neck. I like that little addition, but it doesn't look like Jason around the head anymore. He's got this fuzzy hair. Jason shouldn't have hair like that. And you see his eyes. Like, this looks like King Hodder. It just looks like King Hodder wearing a mask. It doesn't even look like Jason anymore. So that's a bummer. And because this is a 2000 movie, the CGI at the time was not that great, so therefore this is the most aged film in the franchise. This one ages itself the worst out of them all. There's lots of little insert shots of like spaceships trying to dock themselves onto other spaceships, and it just looks like a video game from the late 90s, some kind of cartoon that you're watching it just doesn't look good even those like little ants which i think is a cool concept maybe we'll get there someday in our technology and hope hopefully because how awesome would that be if you could just lose your arm and it'd be like don't worry there's little ants that will repair my arm it'll be like it never happened but those ants clearly cgi it just doesn't look good so not a fan of the cgi but that's it's a product of its time the CGI was always shit for the most part in the 90s and early 2000s. Overall, I wasn't a fan of the score. Like, the opening, it sounds like something out of a Hellraiser movie. Maybe I'm alone on that. But it just, I get they're going for a different sound because this really is a whole different setting and mood. And Friday the 13th movie, it really should have its own sound. But I'm not a fan of it. I'm just, meh. Sounds too sci-fi, original, cheap. It's just not very creative. I'm, I just wasn't a fan of the sound. It just wasn't working for me. Am I alone on that? I'm sure I am. Whatever. And Larry said Uber Jason should have been introduced a lot sooner instead of saving it for like the last 10 minutes. And the character of KM is just too silly. Like this movie needs to pick a lane. Like are you going to be serious or are you going to be full on cheesy comedy with funny characters dropping little one-liners here and there? It 
feels like two different mood tones melded together, two different scripts, and that's obviously what happened. Because like I said, it just it's way serious throughout most of it. And then there's just these little moments here and there that completely come out of nowhere. Like that nipple twisting scene, that just needs to be taken out completely because it's not funny, it's just cringeworthy. And then you got nipples falling off of the robot. This robot seems to have a lot of emotions for a robot. The way she's like in love with her creator and making out with him, that doesn't make sense. But I guess it's the future, anything can happen. But just pick a tone, pick a lane, and stick with it. Be funny, add more humor, and then maybe I'll enjoy this better. Which would be a mixed thought on this, because I do enjoy some of the humor. But I just feel like there should be a lot more of it, especially given how silly this concept is. You got Jason Voorhees in space, and almost half this movie feels very serious, somewhat serious. The characters are taking the situation serious. They're really trying to defeat Jason. Nothing's a joke when it comes to Jason in this movie. They're not laughing shit off, all right? It's serious. But just little things here and there, like the, like I said, nipple thing, take that out. Just some of the humor was not working for me at all, but I did have a chuckle here and there. Besides, we found Condor. What's his condition? He's screwed. And another mixed aspect of this film is the acting. Most people in this movie are fine or decent, but there's a couple of characters that I thought were just outright bad, especially the guy who creates KM. I thought he was just awful. And then, like, the girl who says, like, this sucks on so many levels. Why don't you stick your head out that door and take a peek? And she calls that one guy a dumbass. No, you're the dumbass. But final thoughts, I think this is an okay Jason movie. I think it gets shit on a little too much. It's not that bad. It's just got some shoddy CGI, a little bit of some bad acting here and there, some humor that didn't work that well. But humor is subjective. Film is subjective, really. But... It's a decent time. I don't hate myself when watching it, but it's not one that I would watch during a marathon or annually. But it's got some good things going for it. Obviously, I think King Hodder is great as Jason once again. It's probably his most badass, brutal performance ever. It's got some great kills, one of the greatest kills in the franchise that I will be talking about later. And just overall, a decent experience. So when it comes to Jason X, I would just recommend streaming it, borrowing it from a friend, or renting it at Redbox. All right, now it's time for the spoiler discussion where I go way in depth and I overanalyze and nitpick little tiny dumb stuff in the movie. So this movie opens up in what looks like hell, but then it's just the inside of Jason's body. And it takes place in 2010, they said, I think. And his mask has the markings and damage from previous films, it looks like. So I guess there's some continuity with the look of Jason, but he's got all his hair and shit. He looks kind of different. There's this poltergeist moment it, it just took me right back to that scene in Poltergeist where the little kid in his bedroom with the clown, he like throws a blanket on the clown, like, stop looking at me. <laughs> this guy just walks up to Jason like, look at this, asshole. And then Cronenberg and his lackeys come on in. They're going to take Jason and study him, but Jason escaped. He's taken them all out. Small security for this place. And even after this little small Cronenberg team gets taken out, there's like nobody roaming these halls outside. There's like nobody there. And this place is massive. Where is everyone? It's Jason fucking Voorhees. Like he's a national phenomenon at this point. Like everyone knows who he is. He's being studied by the like fucking CIA. So where is everyone at this place? I get it. Probably not, you know, it's, it's a budget thing, I bet. So we get a uh, quadge, a little homage to where Kang Hodder grew up. It says Quaj right on the cryogenic freezer thing. And I like how he's able to stab his machete right through that steel door and that machete doesn't even break. Get the fuck out of here. That machete is not that strong. I get Jason strong, but that doesn't mean the machete is too. All right, a little logic issue I have right there. And we find out that hockey is illegal in the year 2024. So that's four years away. We'll see if that becomes true. And how did no one find Rowan? So like what? When he, when this this room was designed that if there's a small leak of the cryogenic freezing air that's shooting out, whatever, it just seals shut conveniently to fuck this girl over. And like she's hitting the button to stop and it just doesn't work no more. 
that doesn't make sense. That's just con inconvenient for her, convenient for Jason to get one up on her. Like, oh, you thought you had me? <laughs> Got you, bitch. It's like, really? All that shit just shuts and nobody in the building ever went down there to check for her? Did that place close that night? That was the last day anyone was ever going to like work there? That was the last shift? No one went down there to find Rowan? Really? They just left her there? Like, how the fuck did that happen? Maybe that was Judgment Day. Like, <laughs> that'd be very convenient, too. It was, like, in Terminator 2, like, right after she froze, like, later that night, that's when the Earth just stopped. But I don't think they say that later on. They, they, they never said what year Earth 1 was completely, like, wiped out and no longer inhabitable. Um, so yeah, Earth is destroyed, and we got this college group going, and they're studying Earth One. They're going to collect shit, I guess, to sell it on futuristic eBay or whatever. And and then the, this guy gets his arm chopped off, and here's where some bad acting comes in. He gets his arm chopped off, and he acts like it's like a, a knee scrape. He's like, "Ooh, ah, my arm! Oh, I lost it." We find out that Jason has a very small brain. And then Jason goes to hell. We found out that he had a huge heart that was twice the size of a normal heart. So that's kind of interesting. Like his heart is so huge, yet he lacks a heart. You know, he's soulless. He's very mean. Someone with a big heart, like in The Grinch, you know, the, big, the cartoons taught us as children that the bigger your heart is, the more nice you are. Not in Jason's case. And he's got a small brain. You would think it's bigger because he knows how to, you know, strategize and take people out one at a time so it's the year 2455 and there's facetime in the future it's a different looking type of facetime and this guy just knows who jason is and there's all these other people that are being you know thought out and brought to life there's people on earth too that are over 200 years old and he he's gonna sell jason he's gonna sell rowan i guess i'm not sure what he plans to do with her but he's like she's so valuable like, what, he's going to turn her into, like, some kind of, like, museum attraction where people can just pay money, walk in, like, look at the 455-year-old woman. Doesn't she look awesome? I'm not sure what he's planning to do with Rowan, but it doesn't make sense to me. And neither does the nipple-twisting scene that comes out of nowhere. It's just so silly and dumb. Take it out. It's like, how how is he getting any pleasure from that? He's, like, wearing, like, a ballerina outfit or something. I don't know. I try not to watch. I'm not sure what he was wearing. And she's just twisting his nipple, like, in a leather outfit. And they're not even really having sex. <laughs> she's just twisting his nipple. He's like, you pass! I wish passing class was that easy. And it, because of the editing, it makes it look like Jason Voorhees was brought back to life due to a couple having sex. Like, as soon as this woman has, like, an orgasm, he wakes up like, I hear teenagers fucking, I got some killing to do. And then we get probably one of the best kills of the franchise where he takes Adrian, a little callback to Adrian King, Alice, starts copping the feel, he's like grabbing her tits as he's moving her around the room, puts her head in the cryogenic like sink, freezes her face, and then smashes it. Her face just uh, gets obliterated. <laughs> And Mythbusters actually did a whole episode about this, trying to see if it could actually happen. So we find out that the executions of Jason started in 2008, but yet, so they had him for two years, because this movie takes place in 2010 in the opening. So for two years, they were executing him, but they couldn't figure out anything to kill him. They're like, we tried hanging him, we tried electrocuting him, we tried gassing him. Well, did you try what Jason Goes to Hell did, and that is blow him the fuck up, or what Jason Takes Manhattan did, and that is melt him. Did you try that? That probably would have been way more effective than all those other things you listed. So that's just silly. And the math does not add up at all. So it's like, she's supposed to be 455 years old? That doesn't add up. So then we get the VR game scene, and this scene never made sense as a kid, and it still doesn't really make sense as an adult. In order to see the things that these guys are seeing, they have to have this like flashing console in their like controller in their hand and these uh, headbands on that like connect to their head and go in their ears. But Jason's not wearing those things, but yet he can see the monsters that they're shooting at and their avatars that look just like them. How come they don't look like different people? They look like themselves. You know, like 
it just doesn't make sense how Jason is able to see that big old goblin monster thing, and then he can also just see their avatars and take them out. But then when the mo- the room's like morphing and changing into what it really looks like, he can see that it's changing around him, despite the fact that he's not wearing shit. He doesn't have a VR thing on him. It's silly, but come on. It's a logic issue that I had to point out. And then he just bangs the guy's nose up against the wall. He actually broke that stuntman's nose. He missed his mark. Blood gushing everywhere. Fuck that stuntman up. He's doing like wrestling moves now. Breaking backs over his leg. You got the BFG. Yeah, I got the big fucking gun. We got some Doom references. Probably one of the funniest jokes in this movie is the screw kill. And he's like, what's his condition? And she's like, oh, he's screwed. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. And I think that character says he foreshadowed it earlier when he said, screw you. No, screw you. You're the one that's going to get screwed. And then I like this joke, too, where Brodsky, he gets, like, stabbed like a metal spike. And he's like, it's going to take another poke in the ribs to put down this old dog. Stabs him with the machete. He's like, oh, yep, that ought to do it. Just funny. We need more humor like that in the movie. There's not enough of it. There's just little things that made me chuckle, but wasn't laughing that much. They should have upped the humor quite a bit. So I like that there's fuzzy dice in the cockpit of the spaceship even in the future they have fuzzy dice and then we get another window jump we always get a window jump in these movies so then solaris blows up so that ups the body count so jason's responsible for hundreds of kills in this movie so this is the highest body count this is the first time that anyone's ever tried to reason with jason you know this guy's like i got all kinds of money i got connections i'll hook you up i'll suck your dick and then he gets the machete, and he's like, oh, he just wanted his machete back, you guys. Woo! And then head chopped off, but somehow was screaming in the distance. You hear him scream, but the way the scene ended, it looked like he was just getting his head chopped off when he wasn't even looking at Jason. So how he had time to scream makes no sense, but whatever. Maybe he like quickly turned around and screamed right before his head got chopped off. Maybe. I'll explain it that way. I'll make it make sense in my head. So in the future, there's no bikes. I guess on Earth 2, they're all lazy sons of bitches because we see Earth 2, it's just like Earth 1. So why is there no bikes? Everyone's just fucking lazy. And they don't even know what hockey is because it's legal, like I said. Uh, We need to make all sports illegal. How about that? I'm not a sports guy. My problem with sports is the fans, not the sports themselves. People just need to shut the fuck up every once in a while. I just... It irks me, especially the people who say, like, we're, or, like, you know, like, oh, we're in the playoffs. It's like, you mean that team is on the playoffs, not you, you lazy fat ass. You can't play shit. So quit referring to yourself as a member of the team. You're just a fan. Shut up. All right, now that I lost, like, 40 subscribers, let's get back on topic. (laughs) Sports fans are not to be messed with. Don't piss them off, Mr. Hat. So, KM... Beats the shit out of Jason. She shoots his arm off. She shoots his leg off. She blows a hole in his stomach. Then blows his freaking head off too. Conveniently on the nanobite thing that gets its power back. And they're like looking for tissue to rebuild him with. But they only find like metals. That's why he looks like uber Jason. They replace a lot of his skin with metal. So now he's like a Terminator. All broad. He's broader now. His arms can't even like close anymore. He's just permanently like this walking around there is one awesome aftermath kill in this movie and that's the first pilot when you see his body later on he's just strewn about blood everywhere arm here part of his face there brutal shit man wish we could have got to see some of that but i do like that when right before he kills that uh guy crutch he shows him like the head of the captain or the professor and he has his head i never noticed this before but his head i thought he was holding it no no He's got the head at the end of the machete, like he stabbed it, and then he's like walking around the spaceship with a severed head stuck in the end of his machete, which is just badass to think about. And Jason is badass in this one. That whole scene where he's just taking out the grunts one by one, awesome. Just slowly snaps the guy's neck back, guy gets screwed, this chick gets impaled by this pendulum thing that has a pointing in for some reason i'm not sure what the fuck that thing's for then this one chick is just so scared that i think she kills herself or she just wasn't aware of what the hell she was doing but she's like going to leave but then she forgets i guess that it's attached so she like crashes and blows herself up 
I'm not sure if that was on purpose or if she was killing herself. Like, I'd rather blow up than get killed by Jason. You ain't getting me, bitch. You ain't getting me, Slappy. Such a stupid name. That's another thing that's missing from this movie is futuristic jargon. I was, like, waiting for them to, like, use some jargon that was futuristic, something that we've never heard of, something creative, but they're using words that we use today. Like, hey, dude. Hey, Slappy. Who the fuck calls people Slappy? <laughs> so stupid. Like, that was the insult they wrote down on the script. Like, he comes out and he calls Jason Slappy. This guy needs to take some insulting lessons from Tommy Jarvis. So then we get the introduction of Uber Jason, and it's sh very shortly lived. There's not a whole lot of Uber Jason in the movie. Wayland, or whatever this guy's name is, he sacrifices himself. It looks like he's going to have like a one-liner, but he just says, asshole. Like, it looked like he was going to say something else. You know, some kind of pun to go with it. But they kind of, like, cut that out. Maybe I, would, I wouldn't be shocked if there was a pun that they cut out. And then Chinessa gets sucked out. And let's just talk about how ridiculous this scene is. I'm not an astronaut. I've never been to space. But I'm pretty sure that if there was a hole in the side of the spaceship, you wouldn't even have time to blink and grab onto anything. You would just get sucked out immediately. And for some reason, we could see all the air being, like, all the oxygen being sucked out. Like, you can actually see the air within the room makes no sense but she's just holding on for dear life like she would be gone easily i mean i'm like i said i've never been to space but i'm pretty sure she would be dead oh this sucks on so many levels ah! then we finally get some nudity in this movie when we get to the simulation room where they make it look like camp crystal lake we love drugs and premarital sex flash the tits Great scene. And he puts them in the sleeping bags. And he's at the twofer. You got to kill him in part seven, but two of them, which is awesome. He slams her up against a tree. And then Brodsky saves the day. Probably the best character in this movie, for sure. I'm not sure how Jason even survived that explosion. Like, he's in the ship with Brodsky, and it explodes. Like, you see the whole thing out their window. It's... And then all of a sudden, Brodsky and Jason are like flying towards the spaceship that they're on called the Tiamat or something. But how did they survive that? That makes no sense. How the fuck do they pull that one off? And then they land on Earth 2 and they're just completely up in flames and disintegrated. Like they're ashes now. But the mask survived and lands in the bottom of the lake, setting up for the sequel that we never got, which is a shame. That would have been cool to see Jason uber jason killing people on earth too like there's so much room to for exploration with that like you could go anywhere on earth too explore that what does the future look like in you know 2455 on earth too what's the city look like some kind of back to the future part two thing where you got movie theaters with holograms coming out you know stuff like that it would have been cool if we got a sequel to this but unfortunately we did not because everybody hated this movie. But that's the end of Jason X, so now let's go into my awards. The Hockey Mask Award for Best Character will go to Brodsky. He's the most badass guy in this movie. He's the voice of reason. He's gonna take down Jason no matter what. He ain't gonna keep him alive. Fuck what the professor says. He is badass. And the Mr. Hanky Award for Worst Character slash Acting will go to the creator of KM. I think his name is Suwant. Sue Aaron or something futuristic and dumb sounding. And the clap award for best scene is that whole grunt massacre scene where Jason is just taking out grunt after grunt in brutal ways. And the funny bone award for funniest moment will go to the simulation room. And the hottest chick in this movie is the final girl, Rowan, who's actually a pretty decent final girl, especially in the opening. She takes charge and kicks some ass and prevents Jason for, from killing for over 400 years, so you gotta give her some credit for that. And the best shot in this movie, the one that I like the most, is the backlit shot of Jason walking towards the camera at the beginning. And the Mr. Harry Wolf for best kill will go to Adrian, who gets her face frozen and then smashed open on the desk. It is the best kill in this franchise and one of the best kills of all time. And the Mr. Twig Award for Worst Kill will go to Gecko, the female grunt who walks backwards for like 20 feet 
No soldier would do this, and then she just gets her throat slit. She deserves it. She's a moron. You gotta check your six. But those are my thoughts on Jason X. Put all your thoughts on this movie in the comments below. Is Uber Jason your favorite look? What's your favorite look of Jason? What's your favorite kill from this movie? Is it the face smashing one that most people like? Put all of it in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like what you've seen, you can hit this like button to show some support and also by subscribing today. And you can do so by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed her scene.